Before we get started with the video, let me give you some bad story on how this video came to be. Lemon, the guy who runs the YouTube channel named The Backlods, recently made a video about his quest in trying to beat Pikmin 1 with only Yellow Pikmin. Now, he wasn't able to do it, but for good reason. This challenge is extremely hard. And I know because I tried it myself. Using some strategies that Lemon wasn't aware of at the time, I was able to beat the game collecting 29 out of 30 ship parts. Now, this video kind of blew up on my channel, and shortly after it was released, Lemon contacted me with a proposal. He proposed a competition, specifically a competition in Pikmin 2. Just like with the Pikmin 1 video, he wanted to choose one type to beat the game with. And whoever could get the most treasures with that one type would be the winner. And we could choose whatever type we wanted, so I went with blues and he went with purples. Which we thought was pretty fair. Blues might have access to more areas, but purples are far better in combat, so it kind of balances out. So come with me now as I take you on a journey through my side of the competition, which is beating Pikmin 2 with only blue Pikmin. And Lemon, this now means that we are sworn enemies. Okay, I'm kidding. Guys, Lemon seems like a really nice dude. He's been pleasant and professional throughout this whole thing. Anyways, on with the video. So, I said it before that I don't really like asking for subs at the start of the video, but last time I did it, you guys went fucking crazy and like 3,000 people subbed. So, if you like the videos on this channel, please consider subscribing. It's been a dream of mine for so long to actually be able to make videos like this for a living, and you guys are actually making me think that it's possible. So, thanks. So, if you've played this game before, you probably know it's not technically possible to beat the game with only blues. On day one, we're forced to use reds to complete the tutorial. There's really no way around it. So, I sprout some red Pikmin, grab the Duracell battery, and end the day. And on day two, we still have to use reds. Because we don't have access to the Awakening Wood yet, which is where the blue Pikmin are found. But, as a compromise, I'll be ignoring any treasures that don't help me unlock the Awakening Wood. So, I won't be touching the Utter Scrap and all the treasures the Emergence Cave. Well, all but one. The Spherical Atlas. Unfortunately, we need this part to unlock the Awakening Wood. There's no other way to do it. I thought that maybe if you paid off the debt, it would unlock every area in the game, since that's the trigger for unlocking the game's final area, the Wistful Wild. So I used the code to pay off the debt on day one, but it didn't do anything. It didn't even unlock the Wistful Wild. I even checked with the Pikmin speedrunning discord, and they also said it wasn't possible. So unfortunately, if we even want to get started on this run, we're going to have to use purples. Which kind of sucks, but we got to do what we got to do. On day three, we finally arrive at the Awakening Wood. Which, like I said before, is where we find blue Pikmin. So, that means we're done using the other colors, right? Well, no. Not quite. Unfortunately, even though blue Pikmin are in this level, they are locked behind an electric fence, which requires yellow Pikmin to break down. Now, you find yellow Pikmin in the game's third area, Perplexing Pool. And even if we could use them, they're locked behind a poison gate, so we couldn't get to them anyways. So how the hell are we going to get to those blues? Well, we're going to perform a trick called Early Blues. But to do this trick, we're going to need the five-man knapsack, which is a treasure you get from defeating the boss in the White Flower Garden. Now, the five-man knapsack is probably the most broken item in the game, and will allow us to break this run wide open once we get it. But we still do need to get it. There's really no other way for us to get blue Pikmin without it. Unless we get whites and then yellows, which at that point, we're just playing the game like normal. The white flower garden is blocked off by this paper bag, which requires 200 Pikmin to crush. And I thought there was no other way around this, so I got the 20 purples required to crush the bag. But I was wrong. If we use this creeping chrysanthemum close to this corner here and then attack it, it'll fight back and use this push move. And if we angle ourselves correctly when it does this, we can use it to push Olimar out of bounds. 
we can then walk down to this ledge and throw our Pikmin up here, and then bring them through the water to this cave, bypassing any need to crush the bag. So let's just pretend I did this and didn't use 20 purples instead. And if you're wondering why we don't just watch straight over to the blues from here, it's because there's an invisible wall that stops us from doing so. So we have to go to the white flower garden and get the knapsack, which is what I do. I skip all the treasures in the cave and just defeat the boss, grabbing us the five man knapsack. And now with that done, we can finally grab our blue boys and start this run for real. So what the five man knapsack allows us to do is lie down. And just like in the first game, when Almar lies down, Pikmin will pick him up and try and bring him back to the onion. And we can use this to absolutely break the game. If we throw a Pikmin here and then lie down by these weeds, it'll carry us straight up the ledge. Which we normally wouldn't have access to unless we had blue Pikmin to break down this wall. And now that we're up here, we need to make our way over to the scales, so we can perform a trick to clip out of bounds. To do this, we need to bring over two Pikmin, and throw one at the poison wall and one at the left scale. We then quickly maneuver Almar back over to the right scale as it's rising up and this cutscene will play. And when we come back from the cutscene, Almar will be clipped straight into the wall. Now this works because Almar's position won't change on a scale when a cutscene is playing. So Olimar stays on the ground, but the scale still rises, which effectively pushes him out of bounds. The problem is, we're on a very narrow piece of land. If we walk too far to the right, we'll fall into the void and get transported back to the ship. And if we're too far to the left, we'll clip back inbounds. So we have to be very careful. And after a couple of tries, I made it all the way over to the entrance of the White Flower Garden. Which, at that point, I had to turn 90 degrees to the right and run straight forward. And as soon as I walked off the ledge into the void, I had to hold down the X button to activate the 5 man knapsack. And if I did this right, the cutscene for the blue Pikmin would play. And somehow, we made it. We actually made it in. And I can't move. Yeah, apparently sometimes this just happens. You'll just soft lock the game and can't move. So I do this all over again, make my run towards the blues, and this time it actually works. I then spend the rest of the day trying to get as many blue Pikmin as I can in this little area. Since we can't really leave because the electrical fence is still up. And we also can't get this paint tube back to the ship either because of the same reason. Um, this is future Dan here. Remember this moment because it'll end up fucking me later. Anyways, nothing left to do here so we're gonna go to sunset and end the day. On day 4, now that we finally have our blue Pikmin, we can officially start this run. So first thing we do is head straight over to the Hole of Beasts. And we demolish the cave, collecting every treasure in the process and making quick work of the boss. The only thing to note really is that the cave is supposed to be meant for red Pikmin because of all the fire. But it's super easy to finish the cave with blues because fire is so nerfed in Pikmin 2. First of all, unlike the first game, you can actually destroy these geysers. And second, even if your Pikmin do catch on fire, the game gives you so long to save them so they're not really even a threat. Anyways, we leave the cave and try to explore the rest of the map. Unfortunately, our progress is quickly blocked by this poison wall. But if we walk around the other side, right under the bridge, we can just throw our blue Pikmin over it, essentially building it from the opposite side. And then we immediately come to another crossroads, the geographic projection. Now this is a part that unlocks the game's third area, the perplexing pool. And we need one purple Pikmin to grab it. And at this point, I had to make a choice. If I didn't use the purple Pikmin, I wouldn't have access to the perplexing pool. Which would probably mean I wouldn't have enough treasures to complete the debt. Which would mean I would have to farm enemies in the caves which would probably take forever and make for a very boring video. So I chose to use one purple Pikmin to grab the part and unlock the third area. 
We already knew that you couldn't technically beat the game without blues, so at least this way I can show you guys the third area and all the cool traits that come along with it. Instead of just showing footage of me farming the caves for hours on end. So yeah, we grab the part and unlock the third area. And then we head back down to the White Flower Garden to grab all the parts we missed our first time through. And on sub-level 4, we come across Poison Geysers. Which are an issue, because unlike with Fire Geysers, you can't just kill them with any Pikmin. You need Whites. Or at least that's what I thought. If your Pikmin get poisoned and you call them back with the whistle, they'll have a couple seconds where they can't get poisoned again. And if you throw them on top of the geyser while they have this immunity, they'll do damage to it. And if you do this enough times, it'll kill the geyser, giving you and your Pikmin safe passage. And using this technique, we were able to collect every part in the cave except for one, the Super Stick Tet style, which happens to be fully buried underground. And white Pikmin are the only Pikmin that can get these types of treasures. So basically anything that's buried in the game, we don't have access to. But either way, we leave the cave and end the day having 2,500 Pokos to our name. On day 5, we head back to the Valley of Repose to collect every treasure we missed on day 2. Which includes the utter scrap and all the treasures found in the Emergence Cave. We then unlock the second half of the map by breaking down this wall with our blue Pikmin. With the wall down, we can now proceed to kill everything and bring them back to the Onion, granting us a lot of Pikmin. Which we're gonna need because the late game caves in Pikmin 2 are disgusting. And just as the day is ending, we build this bridge and head down into the Frontier Cavern. Which made me a bit nervous because it houses one of every environmental hazard. But honestly, it wasn't bad. Even though we didn't have yellows, we could deal with the Anno Beetles and the electrical hazards just fine. And I've already gone over how big of a joke fire is in this game. So we end up getting every treasure in the cave except for four, which were all buried underground. But we did end up getting the Brute Knuckles and Repugnant Appendage, two items that will become invaluable later on in this run. On day 6, we're back in the Valley of Repose and we come across our first Fiery Ball Blats. I would normally take these things out with just Olimar, but since we haven't gone to the Ball Blats Kingdom yet, we don't have the Scorch Guard, which makes Olimar immune to fire damage. So if we try and attack him, we'll get burnt alive. Luckily, if we lure him into the water, his flame will go out, allowing us to attack him with our blue Pikmin. We kill him, grab the treasure, and then bring the unspeakable wonder back home. After that, we head over towards the subterranean complex. But unfortunately, it's blocked by a poison gate. And there's no way we can get past these gates. Even with the technique we were using earlier, we still can't damage the poison geysers. It's almost as if the wall is blocking the geysers from being damaged. So we'll have to find another way around. Guys, it's time for me to tell you why the 5-man knapsack is so broken. We can use it to climb up walls. If we throw Pikmin up on this ledge and then lie down near it, the Pikmin will fall down and then carry us straight up the wall. Now, this won't work on every wall, but there are certain spots where the Pikmin's pathfinding will get confused. And on their way to bring us back to base, they'll just climb up walls sometimes. And we can just use this to bypass the Poison Gate completely, giving us access to the Subterranean Complex without whites. Now, the Subterranean Complex is just an awful cave. There are tons of Poison Geysers, which we can deal with but are still annoying, Gatling Groints, and our first introduction to Falling Bombs. Which are bombs that will just fall out of the sky when you walk past their trigger point. And they are especially egregious on sub-level 5. I walked through the entire floor trying to trigger all of these bombs, but the devious thing about these bombs is that they have multiple conditions that trigger them. Some will trigger if it's only Almar walking past, some will trigger if you have Pikmin in your party, and some will only trigger if the Pikmin are carrying a treasure past it. 
So like here for example, even though I went through the entire floor with Almar, bombs are still dropping because I'm now walking past them with Pikmin. And here, you can see the bomb only drops when I finally pick up the treasure. Which is just fucking evil. And then, on sub-level 6, there's this bullshit. Animal beetles, poison geysers, and bombs all in this small area, guarding two treasures we need. And somehow, we get them both while only losing 5 Pikmin. And then, on sub-level 7, we finally come face to face with the Gatling Groik. Which is probably Pikmin 2's most hated enemy. But honestly, they're not as scary as they look. The Gatling Groik shoots three missiles out of the front of its face. But only the middle shot can actually hurt your Pikmin. So, the attack looks a lot worse than it actually is. But either way, we dispose of both of them, and then move on to the boss of the cave. Man at Legs. Who is actually pretty easy if you know how to fight him. If you just hide behind this barricade while he does his attack, you'll be completely fine. So, we end up finishing the cave, only missing one part. Which, again, happens to be buried underground. Once we leave the cave, I then finish the day by trying to get this stupid bear statue off this ledge. You're supposed to get this treasure with yellows because of their higher throw height. But if you throw a blue Pikmin just right, you can get them up there as well. It's just really annoying and it takes forever because you have to do this precise throw like 25 times. It takes so long in fact that I have to come back on day 7 and spend the entire day just getting this one part. On day 8, we finally get to the perplexing pool, and absolutely smash through the Citadel of Spiders, which is an easy and uneventful cave. We do end up missing two parts however because once again they are buried underground. When we leave the cave, we head over to break down this wall, which I imagine will cause Lemon a lot of trouble in his run. In fact, this whole level is probably a disaster for him. But either way, we do the scale puzzle, grabbing us the massage girdle, and then we head down into the submerged castle. And the whole gimmick of this cave is trying to deal with environmental hazards using only your blue Pikmin. Which is essentially this entire run, so it makes zero difference to me. The game gives you Ballmen to try and help you with this, as they're immune to every environmental hazard. But since we're doing blue only, we can't really use them. Oh, and I guess I should mention the other gimmick of this cave. This guy. If you're on a floor for longer than 5 minutes, he'll fall down and try to roll over your Pikmin. And we went through this cave so fast, we didn't even see him until sub-level 4. And it was only because this wall glitched out and my Pikmin couldn't attack it. Which is honestly something I've never seen before. But after restarting the floor, it seemed to fix the issue, and we got to the final floor just fine. And, unfortunately, we can't kill the Plasma Wraith. The whole thing with this guy is that he can only be damaged with Purple Pikmin. And since we can't use Purple Pikmin, we can't really do anything. There is a way you can kill him in Pikmin 4 without Purples, but not in Pikmin 2, unfortunately. So, we have to leave the cave without getting the Professional Noisemaker. Which really sucks, because getting the treasure gives you the Pluckaphone, which is probably the best upgrade in the game. Regardless, we leave the cave and then grab the Aquatic Mine from this Toady Bloister, right before we end the day. So with the Submerged Castle done, we only have two more caves left in the Perplexing Pool. The Glennon's Kitchen and Shower Room. The problem is, they're both locked behind electrical gates, but as we've already learned, that doesn't really mean anything. Let's look at the Glutton's Kitchen first. If we come over here to where this tree stump protrudes out of the wall and lay right beside it, we can have our Pikmin carry us up this tiny ledge. Once we're up here, all we have to do is whistle the Pikmin, drop down, and then enter the cave. And since this cave is meant for yellow Pikmin, it's a little sketchy. There's a lot of electricity, and if I didn't mention this before, electricity is an insta-kill in Pikmin 2. Either way, we make it through the cave just fine until we reach sub-level 4. Sub-level 4 is home to the Invigorator, a treasure that spawns on top of this pedestal. 
and it can only be reached by yellow Pikmin. I tried for a while, and I couldn't even get one blue Pikmin up there. No matter where I threw from, they just couldn't get up there. So, it seemed like I had to leave this treasure behind. Which is what I would say if Pikmin 2 wasn't so stupid. I haven't talked about this yet, but Pikmin 2's caves are completely randomized. So every time you go into a cave, the floor layout, enemy placement, and even treasure locations will be different. And we can abuse this. If we turn off the game and then come back, sub-level 4 will be completely different. And after only one reset, we drop down and see the invigorator sitting there right in front of us, making a seemingly impossible part absolutely trivial to get. Unfortunately, this only works for certain parts. Parts that are fully buried will always stay fully buried. So all those treasures we missed in previous caves, we still can't get. But for right now, we got the invigorator and that's all that matters. We then come to the final floor of the cave, which is probably my favorite floor in all of Pikmin 2. We quickly dispose of the boss and grab the dream material, which makes us immune to electricity. We then leave the cave and reach the shower room, which is the other cave locked behind an electrical fence. And this time, we don't even need to use our fancy knapsack to get by it. If we build this bridge and then run out this corner in a specific way, we can just run straight up this ledge. And then once we're up there, we can just walk around the electric fence, throw our blue Pikmin on this ledge, whistle them down, and then break the rock barrier. Take note that you need the speed boost given by the repugnant appendage to do this trick. If you try doing it with Almar's base speed, it just won't work. So if you want to try this yourself, keep that in mind. The shower room though is pretty easy, except for one really annoying thing that happens. While I'm trying to break open this egg to flower up some Pikmin, a Wallywog falls straight on top of me. And it keeps attacking me while I'm knocked over, leaving me with only a sliver of HP left. And then on sub level 5, I run into a fire geyser, which kills Olimar. And normally, I wouldn't care about this because we still have Louie, but the boss in this cave is so much easier if you have two captains. The boss will lock on to whatever captain you're playing as. So you can lure him with one captain, and then sneak around the back with the other and attack his tail, making this fight trivial. But since Olimar died, we had to do this fight with just Louie. And honestly, it wasn't that bad. For defeating the boss, we get the Amplified Amplifier, which makes our whistle area bigger. And I didn't even realize, but in finishing the cave, we had completely paid off the debt, which unlocks the final area of the game, the Wistful Wild. But before we go there, we still have some work to do in the Awakening Wood. We go around the Awakening Wood collecting every available part to us, which includes this dice block and this cold sore cream, which normally requires yellows, but if we use the knapsack to get on this tree stump, we can throw our Pikmin up to us and then throw them on the part. And since we're already here, we can use the knapsack once again to get on the very top of this tree, which grants us access to the Ballblatt's Kingdom without having to break down this electrical fence. It's a little tricky whistling all my Pikmin from here, but we eventually get them and head down the hole. And honestly, the Ballblatt's Kingdom is a complete cakewalk. We steamroll through the entire thing and then kill the Emperor super easily. He's an absolute joke in this game. For our troubles, we get Forged Courage, which makes us immune to fire and will definitely come in handy later. We do miss one part in the cave, however, because once again, it's buried underground. On day 11, I try and grab the last remaining parts around the Awakening Wood. I grab the birdie and then look longingly at the paint tube on the other side of this electric fence. Because even though we can get to the other side, we can't really get any parts out. So with nothing else to do, I move on. We have one cave left in the Awakening Wood, but the problem is it's blocked off by this poison bridge. And just like with the poison walls, we can't destroy the geysers hidden underneath. So we'll have to find another way around. And luckily, there is one. If we take one Pikmin and throw it up on this ledge, we can use it to wake up this creeping chrysanthemum. 
It'll then come over and try and attack us, but it's unable to walk off the ledge. If we then attack it ourselves and make it bite itself, it'll knock itself over and fall down off the ledge. If we then position Olimar between the wall and the Creeping Chrysanthemum and attack it, it'll do this belly bounce. Which, if done correctly, will knock us straight up the ledge. We can then throw our Pikmin up on the ledge, break down this wall, and voila! We now have access to the Snagger Hole. And since the Snagger Hole is supposed to be an early game cave, it's really easy. We blow through it and grab every part on our way out. On days 12 and 13, I try and grab the bottle opener and Velastic Pickle Lid, which proves to be kind of difficult because you're supposed to use yellows to get them. With a couple accurate throws though, I'm able to grab the bottle opener and bring it back to the ship. The Velastic Lid, however, gave me a bit more trouble. It seemed like it was a bit higher up, so I couldn't just get Pikmin up there with a straight throw. However, I learned that if I banked them off the walls, they would get a bit more height. And this extra height was just enough to get them up on the ledge. It was still really annoying though, because doing this was really precise, and I had to do it 15 times. It took me 3 quarters of the day to get the part down, but either way, it was done. After that, we finally made our way to the Wistful Wild, the game's last and hardest area. After exploring for a bit, I decided to descend into one of the area's three caves, the Cavern of Chaos. Now, all the caves in the Wistful Wild are really long and filled with annoying enemies. Like Sublevel 2 for example, which has three fiery ball blasts which all house a treasure inside of them. And since I only have blues, I have to manually kill them one at a time. Thank god there's no time limit in caves because this took forever. And then on sublevel 7, after slowly making our way through this gauntlet of poison geysers and blowhods, we find another wall that my Pikmin just won't attack. Which is just so awesome. And there's a treasure behind it, so I'm forced to reset the floor. I'm not sure why this keeps happening. It might be because I'm killing geysers without white Pikmin, and maybe that's breaking something in the game. Or it could just be a random glitch and I'm getting really unlucky. I don't know. But either way, we try again and every wall is breakable, so we complete the floor just fine. Then we reach the final floor and fight the segmented Cropster who is normally really annoying, but with the use of a couple spicy sprays, we take him down pretty easily. We end up completing the cave and only miss one treasure, which again is buried underground. The next cave on my list is the Hole of Heroes, which we unfortunately can't get to. The way you normally get to this cave is by breaking down this electrical fence, walking along this bamboo shoot, and then dropping down to this area here. But since we can't do that, we gotta find another way. If we use this Creeping Chrysanthemum in the same way we did in the Awakening Wood, we can get knocked out of bounds. We can then throw all of our Pikmin out of bounds and walk over to the Hole of Heroes. And the Hole of Heroes is a long cave. In fact, it's the longest cave in the game at 15 floors long. But a lot of it is just fighting the same bosses we've already seen in this run, so I'll be skipping a lot of it. Floor 7 in particular is a real bitch though. You get dropped down in this small area with 4 cannon beetles and a ranging bloister. And oh yeah, rots will just randomly fall from the roof. So that's awesome. Either way, we get our Pikmin to safety and leave them with this corner. And then have the president beat all the cannon beetles to death. And with the cannon beetles dead, we take care of the range in Bloister quite easily. On floor 15, the final floor of the cave, we meet up with the Raging Longlegs, who is just an easier version of Beady Longlegs. He has more health and bigger feet, but since his ball is so low to the ground, you can attack him whenever you want. And if you just stay in the middle, he basically can't hurt you, so he's pretty easy. So we defeat him, grab the treasure, and leave the cave leaving only one treasure behind, which, yep, you guessed it, is buried underground. And with the whole of heroes down, we have only one cave remaining. The hardest cave of them all. The Dream Den. But again, just getting to the Dream Den is an issue. 
There are two entrances to this cave, but both of them are blocked off by poison gates. And like I said before, we can't kill the geysers under these gates because they are somehow immune to damage. Luckily, there's another way around. And it's called the Tony Hawk Skip. Okay, it's not really, but it'd be pretty cool if it was, right? If we use the five-man knapsack and lie down in this corner, we can have our Pikmin take us right up this wall like it's a fucking half-pipe. And after he's done shredding, he'll just drop us down on the other side of the wall, giving us full access to the Dream Den. All we need to do now is bring our Pikmin over to this side, whistle them, and we're in. And the Dream Den is where I think Pikmin 2 gets its reputation for being super difficult from. Because this cave is a nightmare. Take Floor 2 for example, that has a Gatling Groink perched up on this tower like a fucking sniper. Or Floor 3 that just drops a ball bear on you out of nowhere. Or just the entirety of Floor 4. Like, look at this shit, who came up with this? And then we have Fiery Hell, which is just great for blue Pikmin. And then this floor, which is literally just every environmental hazard in the game except for water. And there's also the final floor before the boss, which is just a bunch of ball blatzes, who I beat to death personally. We then come to the final boss of the game, and he's kind of annoying because all of his attacks are elemental, and we only have blues. The gimmick of this boss, if you didn't know, is that he has four treasures attached to his body, and each one of those treasures does a different elemental attack. If you attack the treasures and knock them off his body, he can no longer use that attack. And since electricity is the deadliest hazard in the game, we knock off the shock therapist first, then the flare cannon, and then the comedy bomb. And with only the water attack remaining, he can no longer hurt us and the fight is over. We finish the fight with only 35 Pikmin remaining, which is pretty lucky considering some of the parts take 30 Pikmin to carry. We end the cave once again, only missing one part, which, again, say it with me, is buried underground. So at this point in the run, we only had 25 treasures remaining. We had gotten every possible treasure we could in the caves, so we needed to look above ground to see if we could find any more. We needed two more parts in the Valley of Repose, but they were both buried. There was also two more parts buried in the Perplexing Pool, and one more buried in the Awakening Wood. The Doomsday Apparatus was right by our base in the Wistful Wilds, but it takes a thousand Pikmin to carry, so it was a no-go. And at this point, it wasn't looking good. So many of these parts were just impossible for us to get. However, there was five treasures that maybe had some promise. The Conifer Spire, which was locked behind this electrical gate in the Wistful Wilds, the Decorative Glue, which was locked behind this gate in the Awakening Wood, the Anti-Hiccup Fungus and Seed of Greed, which were locked behind these poison gates in the Wistful Wild, and the Optical Illustration, which was locked behind this gate in the Perplexing Pool. And I say maybe had some promise, because they weren't technically impossible like the other treasures. But I still had no idea how to get them out from behind the gates. And after trying for a bit, I gave up. And decided to end this run with only 25 treasures remaining. Well, that was until I got a message from Lemon on Discord. He wanted to know if it was possible to get past this wall in the Valley of Repose without blue Pikmin. And honestly, I had no idea, so I decided to ask the Pikmin speedrunning Discord. And they responded by showing me this video. A video by Strongman Lin, which consisted of him collecting every treasure in Pikmin 2 in 5 days. Part 1 of this video was him spending 12 hours using a glitch to break down this wall. But Lemon will tell you more about that in his video. For the sake of this run, let's look at what happened later on in the video.
these traits blew my mind. And the best part was, is that it meant that these five parts were all obtainable. So, I got to work. The first treasures I tried to get were the anti-hiccup fungus and the seed of greed. To get these parts, we needed to get the Gatling Groin to destroy the poison geysers with his missiles. And if you're wondering why it's day 31 now, it's because I had to keep advancing the day to get him to spawn in a better spot. He has to spawn on this opposite shore here, because his missiles will only do damage to the geysers if he's shooting them from the side. If you shoot the gate from the front, for some reason, it just does no damage. So on day 31, I finally got lucky and he spawned where I needed him to. And after baiting out a couple of shots, we finally killed the geysers. But again, that weird glitch happened where we just couldn't attack the wall. And this right here is what made me think killing the geysers in these weird ways was causing the game to freak out. But fortunately, it didn't stop us. By just entering a cave and leaving it, we were somehow able to do damage to the wall again. And with the wall down, we were now able to get both treasures with no problem. The next treasure I wanted to attempt was the decorative glue. We now knew that it was possible getting parts over these fences, but getting back in there was going to be a major issue. The only way in this area was by doing the early blue skip. And the only way to do the early blue skip was to trigger a cutscene while this scale rose. The problem was though, we didn't have any more cutscenes to trigger. We already used the one that plays when a Pikmin gets poisoned for the first time, which is the one you're normally supposed to use for this trick. You can also use the spicy spray cutscene, but since we've already used spicy sprays in this run, it won't work. We do, however, have one other spray we haven't used in this run yet. And that's the bitter spray. When you spray an enemy for the first time, this cutscene will trigger. So we could theoretically use that while the scale was going up to clip out of bounds. But unfortunately, it doesn't work. Since there are no enemies nearby, we have to use a different captain and spray an enemy somewhere else. The closest enemy I found was this beetle by the poison wall. Unfortunately though, the cutscene triggers too slowly for this trick to work. You have to step on the scale, swap captains, spray the enemy, and then the cutscene plays. And by the time this happens, the scale has already rose to the top. So instead of clipping out of bounds, you just kind of sit there. So unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to cross this treasure off our list. But if I knew about this trick earlier, it definitely would have been possible obtaining this part. The next one I went for was the conifer spire. To get the conifer spire, we have to do the same creeping chrysanthemum clip as earlier. Then take our Pikmin and walk in the out of bounds until we reach this area here. And at this point, I should probably explain how this trick works. If you put a spiced up Pikmin on a part and then remove them when they turn back to normal, it'll build up speed on the part. If you do this enough times, the part will build up a tremendous amount of speed. And if you throw a Pikmin on the part, the part will move with that built up speed in whatever direction it was moving in when the Pikmin grabbed it. So if we do this and then get the part to move in the right direction, we could theoretically make it climb up the fence. But this is easier said than done. This trick is extremely difficult. Even in the video, Strongman Lin says he tried this trick a hundred times before he got it to work. And I believe it, because no matter how many times I tried it, I couldn't get it to work. Guys, I was at this for two hours and the closest I got was this. It was vibrating like crazy and sort of climbing the wall, but it just wouldn't go over the fence. I didn't want to give up on it, but after trying for so long, I just couldn't do it anymore. So we're also going to have to cross this one off the list. And now we've come to the final treasure, the optical illustration. And just like with the Connor for Spire, we can't reach it through normal means because of this electric fence. But if we raise this scale up and then lie down, we can clip between the wall and the scale and get out of bounds. And if we walk forward a bit, we will fall straight into the void and be teleported over onto this ledge. We can then follow the ledge and walk onto this wall. And with a precise run off the wall, we can get onto this area here. 
We can then follow it all the way around until we reach this wooden fence, which we can just walk straight up, landing us right by the part. Then we do the same thing we did with the conifer spire. We separate our Pikmin into two groups, spice up one, put them on the part, then spice up the second group, wait until the first group turns back to normal, take them off the part, and then get the second group on it. And then repeat this a bunch of times until the part is vibrating like crazy. Side note, if you want to try this for yourself, make sure your Pikmin are leaves and not flowers. It won't work if they're not flowers, and I had to learn this the hard way. Also, I skipped over all the days I spent farming spicy sprays because you need like 10 or 15 to do this properly. And after about 10 or 15 sprays, I wasn't really going anywhere. It was the same thing that happened with the Connor for Spire, where the part was vibrating like crazy, but it just wasn't going over the fence. And when the end of day countdown started, I was pretty much ready to close the book on this one and admit defeat. And then, this happened. With two seconds left in the day, the treasure had made it home and we had somehow made it over that stupid fence. I couldn't fucking believe it. So I called it quits on the run with 21 parts remaining. Here's a list of the 21 parts now. 17 of those parts were buried underground. One was too heavy to carry, one we needed purples to defeat the boss, and two were locked behind fences that were possible to get, but I just couldn't. Out of the 201 treasures, we were able to collect 180 of them. I want to give a huge shout out to Makagi and the Pikmin speedrunning discord. This challenge was extremely difficult and I couldn't have done it without them. And also a huge shout out to Lemon for even coming up with this challenge in the first place. It was a lot of fun and I had a great time working with him. At this point, I'm not sure who's going to win the challenge, because I don't know how many treasures he's collected. But considering I had to use purples, I'm willing to concede the challenge and give the W to Lemon. It turns out using purples is a way harder challenge, and the fact that I technically had to cheat to complete mine only makes it fair. So, congrats Lemon. And I know this video is insanely long, and if you made it to the end, please consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean a lot. Thanks.